along comes Mr. Rhodes on the Iranian deal, uses deception to create this false choice and help get this, uh, this agreement passed. And as I said, this is not the first time Mr. Rhodes has done it. It's not the first time the administration has done it. More importantly, not the first time Mr. Rhodes has done it. I think he did it on the Benghazi issue. I think he did it there as well. Oh, that's Jim Jordan from Ohio slamming Ben Rhodes. Rhodes is the Obama advisor who all but admitted to manipulating the media to sell the Iran deal. Rhodes did not appear before the Oversight Committee, but earlier today I talked to the chairman of that committee, Jason Chaffetz, about that very topic. The star witness was a no-show. What does that mean? Well, it's, uh, it, it, he should have been there. He had seven days' notice, uh, and then less than 24 hours before the actual appearance he was supposed to make, the, uh, the White House suddenly claims that they're going to use uh, separation of powers. On Thursday, they had told the world they had answered questions from the media saying they weren't going to invoke executive privilege, and then all of a sudden he's a no-show. He did appear in Washington, D.C. He did speak. He did answer questions, but he just won't come to Congress. Does that apply to newspaper interviews? Uh, I, I know you were kind of wondering that yesterday. How was that answered? Well, he he, he goes to newspaper interviews. Uh, he he does. Uh, he goes to the podium of the White House. He makes himself readily available, but only to those select people in his echo chamber that he knows he's going to get a good. Spin right, now, from. specifically, tell us and tell the audience what is the alleged deception on the Iran deal. Well, I don't think we know the parameters. Do we have uh, any time, anywhere access, as was originally uh, said by, by Ben Rhodes? Uh, how much money was given to the Iranians? Was it $150 billion, as uh, President Obama is quoted as saying? Uh, was it $100 billion that the Iranians claim? Is it the $50 billion that, that uh, Secretary Kerry is talking about? These are questions that we need to know about. And when did those negotiations start? Ben Rhodes seemed to have spun up this story that we talked to more moderate people in Iran, but it is clear now that they started negotiating with some of the hardliners a lot earlier than that. And just all we want is the truth. So the truth is elusive in your view. And there are Senate Republicans who suggest the White House lied. Do you believe, oh, I do. The, do, do you believe the White House lied? I think clearly they had to snooker the American people in order to get this deal sold. And as has been pointed out previously, they did it on, on uh, Obamacare. They had to do it on, on a lot of other issues in order to get their deal sold. And, and that's this, uh, this, this deception of the American people in order to get this sold. I mean, that's something we need to go back and look at. Well, did this hearing accomplish anything, knowing, yeah, that, ben, did, that, knowing that Ben Rhodes wasn't there? What? Well, like, I, I think we exposed the fact that they did go back and snooker the American people in order to get this thing sold. I think we showed the duplicity in the idea and the notion that uh, they were going to be open and transparent. They were fine having this person uh, appear until hours before the event uh, itself, and they won't answer the hard questions. And again, you see the pattern is they've had to, to really, um, you know, create deception in order to get their big initiatives past well, the American people. Your colleague Jim Jordan was just talking about Benghazi too. What, what's the connection or what's the, what's the disconnect on the Benghazi affair? Well, some of the talking points are, are directly related to Ben Rhodes, but Ben Rhodes voluntarily appeared before the Benghazi committee. Had no problem doing that. Didn't have to be compelled to do so. All right, and stop then when right the oversight there. Committee, Did Ben yes. Rhodes craft the talking points? Were those his well, words? Uh, uh, again, you have, I'm not on the Benghazi committee, uh, Jim Jordan is, but I think there was a direct tie to the spin that comes out of the national, uh, as the national security advisor. Um, you know, he's the deputy there, and uh, he does have some ties there. Now, what's next? Where do you go? From here. Considering, considering all the options, but I think that most importantly, the American people need to know what the president has done with this deal with Iran, because, is, because Iran is no friend of the United States of America. They are the state sponsor of terrorism, and those tens of billions of dollars that they released to the Iranians are going to go back into terrorist organizations that are going to be fighting and trying to kill Americans. Oh. That's and and, yeah. and and Iran with a nuclear weapon that scares the living daylights you, out. You said your your options. Uh, What's your best option now? Uh, we're still considering that. I mean, we, we have the subpoena that we could offer, but when the White House says they're going to claim uh, separation of powers and, and make that executive privilege argument, uh, it makes it very difficult. I, I think pointing out the duplicity is one of our strongest arguments, but still, um, we're considering other options. There's Jason Chaffetz, the Republican from Utah. Sir, thanks for coming back today.
That last point, very important. They won't subpoena because he'll raise his right hand and take the fifth, and he considers that a lost venture. So don't expect to see it. Yeah. All right.